Hello. Today, let's talk about food that is perishable and food that is not. The text before us is from the Gospel of St. John, the sixth chapter, verses 22 through 35. Point one, food that perishes. In this Gospel reading, Jesus confronts us with two different kinds of food and two different kinds of appetites. One kind of food is temporal and perishable. The other kind of food is eternal and imperishable. One kind of appetite is for the belly and earthly. The other kind of appetite is for the Lord and heavenly. Think for a moment about the worldly appetite. The world appeals to your earthly desires and selfish hungers. Hair products encourage you to buy them because, well, you're worth it. Car companies tell you to buy one because well, you deserve it. Even nutrition companies call you to buy their products because they make you feel good. That message sells. We like to hear it because we want to gratify our bellies. We want to satisfy our earthly desires and to indulge our fantasies. Of course, we like to feel good. Worldly philosophies play on this earthly appetite. The 19th century hedonists declared that pleasure is the chief purpose of life. So, they say, carpe diem, seize the day, enjoy yourself. I'm afraid there are too many people today who follow that idea. But the 19th century hedonists were not the first to say that. The Roman poet Horace said the very same thing in 23 BC, enjoy the moment. But Horace was only mimicking the serpent who tempted our first parents to satisfy their appetites. Here, said the devil, taste it, it's good. Indulge your appetite, eat what you want. This selfish and sinful appetite to feed ourselves with the food which perishes is truly powerful. O oh God, forgive our hunger for food which perishes. Forgive us, dear Lord, for allowing the food which perishes to become our God, the center of our thoughts and desires. Beloved, beware. Even some preachers offer this same tempting food. Some preach a prosperity gospel that if you have enough faith, you will have more money, more health, and more joy. Live your best life now, they proclaim. No more suffering, no sorrow, no pain for you or for those who have real faith. Hmm. Tell that to Peter or James or Paul or Jesus. It's just not true. Some twist the law and declare that they themselves have fulfilled the law of God. They have lived, so they say, lives of perfection and holiness. All who follow them, so they claim, will likewise be holy and without sin. Their lives and their lifestyles are righteous because their works are good. Wrong. Others pervert the gospel, saying that God is love, so anything that they do in love is of God. They claim that any act of pleasure or perversion is really good if it's an act that they do in human love. Wrong again. Our Lord Jesus in this Gospel reading is talking about two different kinds of food and two different kinds of appetites. One is perishable, earthly, self-serving, and sinful. The other is imperishable, heavenly, the whole Word of God that both convicts us of our sin and gives us forgiveness and everlasting life. Point two, food that endures. Please understand our Lord Jesus knows that you need earthly food. He was fully human and knew the pain of physical hunger and the cry of physical thirst. Jesus taught us that it was good to pray, give us this day our daily bread, because our Heavenly Father does indeed provide food for us each and every day. But we must not let our preoccupation with perishable food become our life's focus. We must not let the gratification of our bellies 
or the wants and desires of our passions rule our lives. How easy, how easily do our own earthly appetites become our God? Yes, these preoccupying earthly wants can become what give us hope for happiness or assurance of security. How easily earthly things can become your God. Christ Jesus teaches us in the Sermon on the Mount that we are to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added unto you. In the same way the Lord teaches us in this gospel text, Do not work for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man shall give to you. Jesus packs so much into this simple sentence. Do not strive and labor for the false fulfillment of the earthly things. Do not yearn and hunger for crumbs or morsels or scraps of enjoyment. You will find that you are never satisfied. What kinds of foods do you eat day after day? What is your daily bread? Do you eat want and worry for breakfast? Then do you eat anger or judgment, unforgiveness or hatred for your midday meal? Boy, that'll give you indigestion. Or do you dine on desire, personal pleasure? Is that your evening meal? Do you have a little fantasy or fancy for your dessert? Is this your life's food? Are you eating that which perishes And are you expecting to have a heart that's fulfilled and a life that's full of joy? All of your striving is futile. But Jesus, your Savior, has a word of hope. Jesus, your Savior, gives you a promise that fills full your hungry heart and satisfies your thirsty spirit. Jesus says, the food which endures to eternal life, the Son of Man shall give to you. Jesus gives you, free of charge, here and now, food that is eternal and peace that endures forever. Focus upon Jesus and his word. Sit down and eat at his table. Let your heart feast upon Christ. He's giving to you his bread of peace and joy, his three-course meal of faith and hope and love. This is the benefit of eating the bread of God, the true word of God. There are two kinds of food, that which perishes and that which is eternal. Jesus gives to you the food which is eternal. It is made with perfect ingredients. The law of God, that is his righteous commandments, which guide your life. And the gospel of God, which is given to you as his perfect forgiveness and mercy and love. Jesus freely gives the whole banquet, holy food for you to eat each and every day. Beloved, you will go to church each Lord's Day, and this is good. There your pastor is the master chef. He prepares a meal for you. First he leads the liturgy. This is the word of God. The divine name calls you into his presence. There you confess your sins and receive God's word of absolution, forgiveness. You cry out, Lord, have mercy upon me, the sinner. And he speaks to you his mercy, and you sing glory to God in the highest. For God gives you his true peace and forgiveness and makes you a child of God. Then the word of God is read, and the pastor serves a sermon meal. It contains holy ingredients of God's law and God's gospel. Almighty God's commandments are stated again. You receive them with contrition and self-examination. We have sinned. Then Holy God's gospel is stated again, and we are loosed, released from the burdens and the guilt and the shame that we carry. We are forgiven, clean, restored as children of God, inheritors of eternal life. (laughs) Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Be careful where you go to eat. You want to have a good chef who rightly divides the law and the gospel. Then your pastor will obey and fulfill the commandment of Christ to provide the Lord's Supper. 
he will speak the very word of Christ over the bread and cup. And God's promise will be fulfilled. Take and eat, this is my body. Drink of it, all of you, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. We are to do this often, for it is Christ's holy food, for the forgiveness of sins and the promise of eternal life. Third, I am the bread of life. But our Lord Jesus knows us so well. He knows our hunger for the food that perishes. He knows our temptation to eat our fill of that which does not satisfy. It only leaves us ashamed and longing for real food, bread of heaven, food which endures. So our Lord gives us food in many ways. He gives us confession and absolution. Our Lord gives us a sermon that shows us how to apply his word to our lives right now. Our Lord gives us the bread of life and the holy sacrament of his divine body and blood. But soon we are still in need. Sunday morning turns into Sunday evening. We're already starving for holy food again, food which endures. We cry out, O Lord, give me that water that wells up a wellspring to eternal life. Lord, Evermore, give me this bread which comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. Then, to the hungry heart and the thirsting spirit, Jesus declares heaven's word of grace and truth. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not hunger. He who believes in me shall never thirst. So at any moment of the night or day, Jesus comes to you, the Savior, who is himself the bread of life. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He is with you always, even to the close of the age. In many and various ways, the living word of God, Jesus your Savior, comes to feed your empty life and starving soul. He came once as the incarnate God in flesh who died on the cross, walked alive out of the tomb to show you what's in store for you for you too will be raised to eternal life. And now he comes to you, the bread of life, the imperishable food. He is with you. When you read the Holy Bible, he's with you. When you hear the sermon message, he's with you and in you. When you eat his Holy Supper, he is with you. When you receive the mutual conversation and consolation of the fellowship of believers. Conclusion. In this Gospel reading, Jesus confronts us with two different kinds of food and two different kinds of appetites. One kind of food is temporal and perishable. The other kind of food is eternal and imperishable. One kind of appetite is for the belly and earthly. The other kind of appetite is for the Lord and heavenly. Jesus has freely given you the bread which endures. All that you need is to receive his food. All that you need is to believe his word. This is Christ's word to you. I am the bread of life. The one who comes to me shall not hunger. The one who believes in me shall never thirst. Amen.